This is Stephanie. She thinks about buildings differently than you or I do. Stephanie is a consultant. She helps builders make sure that the buildings they're creating are energy efficient and sustainable. But to understand what it is she does, you have to start thinking of heat and energy less as things that come out of vents and outlets, and more like an ecosystem. We are going to talk to Stephanie about how we can use design and technology to make those ecosystems work better, and how what we learn creating buildings can be used to make better neighborhoods, and even cities, here on Renewable. My name is Stephanie Carter, and I'm a sustainable consultant. When I started as an interior designer, it was like week one, I realized that sitting at my desk, I was ordering hundreds of pieces of furniture for one floor in one office tower for one client, and this is happening over and over again across the globe. Interior design is an interesting field because it's very aesthetic driven, and basically every five years there's a new aesthetic, so you could have to get rid of your current finishes and furniture, even if it's not out of date or worn out. It's just aesthetically not trendy. What are they doing with that furniture? Are they just gonna get rid of it? Are they gonna repurpose it? There's so much waste in that. That's going all to the landfill. I was just, I was overwhelmed. Waste. And the scope of that waste sparked a realization that completely shifted Stephanie's career path. She found herself in the middle of a newly emerging field, right at the intersection of human health and how it's affected by the spaces that we live in. A field that can be, admittedly, tricky to explain. The reason why it's hard for me to explain what I do for a living is because it's so complex, but it really is a science of the building. We spend 90% of our time indoors. Some people spend 95% because they go from their condo into their garage, inside garage, into their car, into their inside garage for their work, and into their office, never leaving outside. So all of those spaces should be really healthy, but your car is off-gassing, your house is off-gassing, everything is off-gassing, some sort of fumes that you're breathing in, and everything has an interplay in it. So we always have new information. And that's kind of where the name came from. It was just me at the beginning, but it was... Uh, to arm my peers with knowledge so they could reload with eco ammo. <laughs> Stephanie and her partners consult in building construction. She helps builders navigate issues of sustainability and human health, which is particularly relevant here, in this building, the Mosaic Center. This building is Alberta's first attempt at commercial net zero. Alberta is actually a leader in net zero buildings. We have the highest number of net zero buildings out of Canada, which is great. And uh, this is the first commercial building to, to try that out. And the idea behind the building was to be a shining example of what other people can do. The intent behind it was to make it replicable in the way that it doesn't have to cost more, it's not a science fair project where only certain people could do it because it's too complex, it has to be simple, and it has to be beautiful for people to want one for themselves. So this is the, the Tesla of buildings. So how do you create a net zero building that's beautiful, accessible, and most importantly, not a science fair project? This building has solar voltaic, which is uh, and producing the energy. We have geo exchange, which is just using the constant temperature of the earth to help us heat or cool. It has heat pumps that help in that transition of uh, taking the heat and making it to a higher grade or a lower, lower grade. And then the mechanical system itself is just the heat pumps and fan coils that actually move the energy around the building. So if one part of the building, like the restaurant, needs cooling, and it always needs cooling, and another part of the building, like the north side, needs heating, we can just move the energy around. Move the energy around. That's the core concept that Stephanie and a team of engineers, architects, and tradespeople worked with to achieve net zero. It all starts with an energy model, which is a computer-generated layout of what the team is constructing before shovels ever hit the ground. First, 
The team went about making the building super energy efficient, lowering the total energy required to run it. The team added solar to the roof, but the model helped them realize that by adding geothermal exchange in the basement, which uses the Earth's average temperature to heat and cool the building, they could reduce the amount of solar on the roof, which actually saved money. Next, they implemented an award-winning mechanical system that transfers heat from the hottest parts of the building to the coolest parts, and vice versa. Using glycol lines, they could reuse the hot kitchen and the cool north corner to complement each other, without burning fossil fuels. By starting with a model, the team could experiment with different ingredients to find the best fit and to test out new ideas. So there's a whole bunch of factors, nerdy, nerdy factors that you have to enter in all this data into a software and then out comes some numbers that you can play around with. Like in this building, what we did in order to actually get over the hump and see that we can actually maybe meet net zero commercial was remove all the general lighting. <laughs> we have accent lighting, but general illumination, we decided to take a big leap and say, let's try, let, no general illumination. The electrical engineer was freaking out, the owner was freaking out. <laughs> but in the end it worked because there's so much daylight. Changing those factors and playing with it in a model up front then can allow you to set the course for the design of the building. Once you get to a really high performance building, all of a sudden the business case starts to change. When you think of just adding solar to a normal building, you see that as an extra cost. But when you have a goal to reach net zero, you can push and pull, you know, this cost of geo might look like it's an, uh, an added cost to a regular project, but combined with trying to reach net zero, you're actually saving money by bringing in the geo. It's easy to draw parallels between Stephanie's career path and something that whole sectors of our economy are going through right now. Big changes hinged on these moments of realization about our consumption and our wastefulness that spark a total reevaluation of how we should be doing things. We asked her what sparks those realizations and what motivated her to commit her career to sustainability. I am in nature a continuous improvement person and that I get satisfaction out of. I get satisfaction out of problem solving. And I get satisfaction out of inspiring people and changing the world. Um, sometimes you work on a job, especially at the early days when I was in my early 20s, you go to a job site, it's all guys in their 60s and they're looking at you like, what are you going to tell me? You know, you're a 20 year old girl, I've been doing this forever. And eventually, if you can get them onto the concepts and understanding the value, then to see them ignite with excitement and at the end of the project be the person running around and telling everybody, oh, no, don't do that, don't, you know, like, uh, you can't just throw out your Tim's coffee cup, like, here, use a reusable one, like, going the extra mile, not even just in the construction, but, um, yeah, that's really rewarding to see that change in, in somebody. On this season of Renewable, we are going to be looking at people, engineers, entrepreneurs, thinkers, and activists, each with their own unique vision of a sustainable future in the heart of Canada's fossil fuel industry. Follow us at Green Yeg to find out when new episodes are coming out, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we hope to have you back for the next episode of Renewable. <laughs>